Hi, Tim Skell here, ABB HVAC Application Engineering. Today we're going to start up an ACH 580 using the HVAC Quick Setup. First thing we're going to do is go ahead and click on Menu, go into the Primary Settings, first on the list here, either hit Select or the right arrow, your choice, and top on the list is the HVAC Quick Setup right up here. So what is the HVAC Quick Setup? What we did is we worked with our tech support team, our HVAC startup technicians out there, the mechanical contractors, the controls contractors, worked with them, hey, what do you need access to quickly when you're setting up a drive? And we came up with a short list of what those items are. Based on that list of items, you can typically start up about 90% of your HVAC VFD applications with this simple list without having to go deep dive into any kind of parameters or other settings. So let's take a look at that. I'm going to go ahead and hit select on the HVAC quick setup. And first thing on the list is where does the drive get its start stop signal from? Factory default, digital input one. So that's that relay output from a controller coming into the drive, landing on digital input one. If I wanted to change that, say make that being starting stopping from BACnet, I could go ahead and edit and go into it. But I'm going to leave that at the start stop on digital input one. Similar for the analog input one, where am I getting my speed reference from? Factory default, analog input one. Again, I can set that to BACnet if I wanted to do my speed control over BACnet as an example. Taking a look at my analog input one scaling, let's actually take a look a little bit deeper into here. So I'm going to hit select. And this is where I choose, is this a zero to 10 volt signal or is this a four to 20 milliamp signal? So I can come in here and change that to zero to 10 or four to 20. Factory default, by the way, happens to be zero to 10. So I'd previously changed this to four to 20 milliamps. And then it'd be four to 20 milliamps equals zero to 60 hertz. I can back out so my scaling is good to go. Now ask me, do I want to use a safety or not? So uh, I can uncheck that box by hitting unselect if I had no safeties in it. Factory default has a safety assumed on digital input four, which is what you're seeing right here, digital input four. I can also change that text to that safety. So what I'm gonna do is go into here, instead of having it say start interlock, which is what's going on when the safety is open. But what I'm gonna do is actually change that and say that's my high static safety. So now when that safety opens up, it'll actually tell me that the high static is open and that's why I'm not running. So it's great to add that extra description there. I can add a run permissive signal. This is typically your damper end switch. If I had a air handler and I had a damper control scheme, I could enable that really quickly. I could assign it to a specific digital input and I could put some text to it if I wanted to. I got my minimum frequency. Let's say I've got a fan application and I don't want to go below 20 Hertz. So I can go in there and save that at 20 Hertz. Maximum frequency, I'm going to leave that at, at default at 60 hertz, but if I had a certain fan array design, maybe I want to bump that up to 70, 72, 75 hertz, depending on the air handler design. Or if my test and balance zipper guy didn't want me to go above, uh, say, 57 hertz, I could limit it right there at 57 hertz. I got my X cell and D cell time, so if I wanted something to decelerate quicker, just go into edit. I can lower that to whatever I want it to be, so very easy to adjust your X cell and D cell. Motor nominal values. So here's where I'd go into here and I'd enter my motor nameplate data. So what is my RPM? What is my amps? What are my horsepower? Uh, kind of a neat fun fact, factory defaults are configured for the Baldor Super E motors. So if you left everything at, at default and you forgot to actually set this and you had those Baldor Super E's, guess what? You got lucky and the drive's already set up properly. But it's always a good habit to go in there and set your motor data. Next item is your start mode. Usually this will be left at flying start automatic. That's where if the motor is still spinning, the drive can catch it and pick it up and ramp it to where you need it to go. Uh, not necessarily neither for a, a pump application. So you could adjust that if you wanted to on a pumping application to the ramp start. But if you left it at the flying start for a pump, not a problem. You've also got your stop mode. So this is where you choose where do you want to coast to a stop or ramp to a stop. So application wise fans, I typically coast to a stop. Pumps, I'm going to set that to be a ramp to a stop because the last thing I want to do is tell the drive to stop and have that hammer, that pump go whack and have that water hammer effect. So that's why it pumps you ramp it to a stop. You can set your date and time on here. So you can set your real time clock on here in the next menu. You can even name the drive. So you'll see up here that I've got ACH580 as the drive name. I could call this Supply Fan 1. I could call it SF-1. Uh, one of the neat things you can do is if you actually were using your laptop to start up the drive instead of the control panel or the DriveTune Bluetooth app, you can type in the, the real text there opposed to using the up and down arrows of the keypad to adjust the text. And then we added communication towards the bottom of the list. That's because typically comms are one of the last things to be 
commissioned on a HVAC project. So once you got the other things done, you can come in here and set up your comms. So factory default is back net, but you can go in here and uh, adjust what you want for say your MAC ID, your device object instance ID, your baud rate, you can do auto sensing your baud, your max master, all those things the controls contractors gonna be setting up is all in this menu right here. And that's it. We just went through the HVAC quick setup on the ACH 580 drive. Thank you.